Hey guys and welcome back to the channel. Something a little bit different today but we need to talk about this. I feel like as somebody who of course is a Newcastle United YouTuber I make plenty of videos regarding the club and the interaction between myself or our fans and the club itself. And over the past few weeks of social media it's been highlighted from our Premier League clubs about how bad the interactions between clubs and fans actually are. Leeds and Arsenal being two quite famous examples that have came out. And if you guys have seen these screenshots I've just posted on the screen there, you know exactly what I'm talking about. But if not, that's what I'm here to do today. I'm going to talk you through the two incidents. I'm going to show you the videos of them. And I'm going to tell you just how bad they really are. And I've also kind of done this video to promote how good I think the castle have actually been since the takeover when it comes to interacting with fans and the overall vibes of the club. It's honestly been the best of my lifetime. But anyway, uh, welcome back to the channel, guys. If you're new around here, make sure to get down there, hit that subscribe button, smash the like button, you enjoy this sort of content. Not something I would normally do, to be brutally honest, but I thought today I'll come out and just vent my emotion because it's something I'm, I'm really defensive about. Even myself, never mind the club, I, I love interacting with people whenever I get a chance to go out. I'm so thankful for the support I get around match day. And some of the content I do on the channel, I encourage fans' engagement. When I'm at the games, of course, I'm always doing my... Match reactions outside the ground after the match, intentionally in front of fans so people can come over and share their, I guess, raw emotions after Newcastle's many wins this season. So, yeah, uh, I do love fan engagement and, of course, for Premier League clubs, whether the players like it or not, they've always got to do it. Because without fans, let's be honest, uh, Newcastle United would be nothing without the fan base and that goes for every single football team in world football. So yeah, let's just get straight into it. So the first and most recent example being the Leeds fan. Now, this one gained so much traction on social media that Leeds United actually came out with a club statement apologising to the fan. That's just how bad this one was. So I'm going to put the video now on the left-hand side. Well, it'll be all right. But keep an eye on the kid that is waving to the players. Keep an eye on him throughout the entire video. So I'm going to put it on the screen now. So this was, I believe, after the game against Bournemouth. So, of course, they just lost 4-1. Now, I know for Leeds, they're at the worst point in this season. They look like they're going to go down, especially with the fixtures coming up. And they just hired Sam Allardyce as well. So it's not looking too good for them. But after the match, the players are coming out. There's a little boy waving at the players. He just wants some engagement from the players. Not one single individual waved back. and Nobody acknowledged them. They've all got their headphones in and they're just walking past him. Now, I might not sound like much to you, but trust me, for a little kid, a, a football fan, growing up, I mean, you idolise these players. You absolutely adore the individuals that are walking past them. And even the lead security guard stands in front of the kid to make sure you can't wave or interact with the players. It's unbelievable. That one really got under my skin. It was disgusting. <laughs> I just couldn't believe this, the level of arrogance from some of those players. Bear in mind, I swear that leads are crap. Leeds are not a good team at all. I can't believe how arrogant some of those players are. I remember Bielsa quite well as well at Leeds. He was so lovely. I've seen so many stories online where Bielsa's giving out sweets to the kids when he's interacting with the fans. He's just a lovely person. And the overall mentality Leeds fans have seen to come across as overall mentality since Bielsa's left just completely vanished. And all of these players now are just not interacting with the fans at all. And it's something that... Gained a lot of traction on social media. And I've got to be honest, I can kind of see why it's a really bad video. And then Leeds United have came out afterwards with a club statement. And I put the, the club statement on the screen now. I've got to be honest, I, I do think it's PR driven. I, I don't think it's, it's as sincere as it possibly could be. I think the only reason they've really put the club statement out is because of how much traction the post has generated. I think if it wasn't much traction, they wouldn't have done this at all. So I do think it is PR driven. But... At least they have done something. Uh, the the clearly said in there, we're sorry to the kid in question. We're going to make sure we get his parents' contact details. We're getting a shirt signed, which is nice. I, I do like that quite a lot, but still, uh, it shouldn't really be a case where you've got to have this video posted online for the club to then react to it. It should be a case where, I mean, they should be interacting with people anyway. And I'm not saying, by the way, they've got to go around and sign autographs and take pictures because I know when you're on a tight schedule, that can be quite a lot. Just even waving saying hello when you're walking past or just winking at the kid or something. It's not hard. It's really not that hard. But yeah, um, that was the first one I came out. I did not like that at all. I get to the second case now with the Arsenal fan. And afterwards, I talk about Newcastle, my personal experiences. Because I think Newcastle's done an unbelievable job since the takeover. 
So the second one being a few weeks ago now. So this is when Arsenal went down to West Ham. The 2-2 draw. So this is when the players were going in before the match. Now this one's a little bit different because this one actually is officially posted by the club itself. So this is a fan that is a, a mascot for the game. So this is this is all to do with the club itself. So the fans getting a shirt signed before the match. And once again, not a single Arsenal player is saying hello. Nobody's interacting with the girl. They're just going over signing the shirt and walking straight in. Again, it might not sound like much, but when you're a younger fan, just buzzing to see the players there. Not one single Arsenal player is waving, saying hello, with the exception of maybe Saka. Nobody's interacting with this girl. Just go over, say hello and sign the shirt. It's really not that hard. Again, um, I don't think it looks that good, to be honest. But in this case, though, um, Arsenal fans have came out and defended it, saying, well, that wasn't the only interaction the girls had with the Arsenal players during the day. She's already met them either before or afterwards, so... The Arsenal fans were defending it, so whether you agree with that is another question. But still, I think, I didn't like the way the video looks. Um, I think you guys can probably make your own judgment from that. But once again, that gained loads of traction on social media. And it's something now that I think has been highlighted quite a bit. And I can kind of understand that because, again, if that was my daughter or my son, for example, and I've seen that happen, I would be livid. Yeah, and if I seen a video from Newcastle as well with the players, I like this to one of our fans, I wouldn't be happy about it. And... Especially with how I think the media has been since the cast has had this take. Well, of course, everyone's always jumping on the Saudi Arabia links, whether you agree with that again or not. And I think it's a case where if something like this was to happen, the media would jump all over it. So it's in the, the club's best interest to make sure something like this doesn't happen to us. But from my personal experience, uh, for the most part, I think it's spot on. I think the players are class. Um, our players are so lovely, they're so friendly, and I think there's so many different Newcastle fans that can share their own individual experience. I think some of the good ones I want to mention here, so I remember somebody at the start of the season got a Joe Linton tattoo all over his chest, so Joe Linton literally messaged the fan on WhatsApp and, and invited him to play football at his house, so that was one example there. It's just lovely, the players are so nice. I remember Bruno as well, he gave away some personalised boots to fans that come up to the training ground with banners, uh, of course, expressing their love for him. And it's one of those ones where I think the Castle honestly have collectively have the nicest squad I've seen in decades at this club. Everyone has one goal. Nobody's in it for themselves. Everyone wants to work together. The team cohesion is exceptional. And for me now, I'll tell you a couple of personal experiences for me. So, of course, I went to Saudi Arabia at the back end of last year. That was actually the first time ever that Newcastle had held an international fan event. So there, had a chance to meet some of the players, Eddie Howe. I may have met Eddie Howe loads, to be honest, but I've had a chance to meet some of the players that I don't speak to too much. And that was just the first example where Sean Longstaff was the first ever Newcastle United player to ask me for a photograph. Now, the reason why I keep banging on about this, because even deep down, uh, I think Sean Longstaff is fully aware of, uh, I guess, what I personally would, would feel about that if a player asked me. For a photograph. So I think even even if he wasn't that arse for the photograph, he just asked anyway, because I, I think he knew how much it would have actually meant to me. So stuff like that, I think players do know how important and how big they really are. And it's a case now where we've got a chance to express it a bit more. I think especially before the takeover what the club I think would have been a lot stricter on what they could do, and I think it would have been quite limited as well with what they could possibly do. And obviously as a content creator as well, I've seen some uh, things since the takeover has happened. Obviously, I think as a fan, I think as any football fan, I would always want more from the club. But that's not a dig or anything. I think the club's done a really good job since the takeover. And as well as that, I remember going to the club shop early on this season. That's actually the first time ever at the club shop where Newcastle United had players in there to sign autographs. And of course, it benefits them as well because people are encouraged to go in there and buy shirts. And it also promotes Castore kit supplier. So there's little things like that where... I mean, the club can always look for benefits for themselves. But if they find someone that works, and I think they should definitely do that. Now, I think if Newcastle get top four this season, I am absolutely certain that the club will do something for it. There's absolutely no way they're not celebrating top four, fine. Especially the first full season after the takeover. I think it's actually no brainer to do that. And of course, as well, we're going to America in the summer. Once again, um, I think as well with the Premier League, the club has to do certain things with the Premier League. So I think every single state will go to, they probably will do some fan engagement events. Just hopefully uh, I, I get invited along to them or I find a, a way to sneak myself in there. But honestly, though, the kind of reason why I came out of this video is just to express my, my disappointment almost in some of these other Premier League teams. Now, this isn't a dig, by the way, at Leeds and Arsenal. It's not a dig in them at all. Uh, if this was Newcastle, I probably would come out and make a video because I really wouldn't be happy about it. So I think it's a case where, obviously, it's a couple of teams that have been highlighted. But at the end of the day, I think every team in the Premier League should really be uh, taking a look at themselves and making sure that this doesn't happen to them. Because I just think it's something that 
I don't think it's good enough, to be honest. You wouldn't really get this in any other sport. Now, I know the Premier League players are multi-millionaires and they are massive, but still, though, I think it needs to be a bit of entitlement. Humbled. Just people making sure that, yes, we are very famous, we are very successful, but we are still, we were still fans at one point, we were still kids at one point. I think, listen, I think they just need to chill a little bit and make sure that we uh, show respect. Uh, obviously, again, this doesn't have to be everyone getting autographs, everyone getting pictures taken, because obviously I know how long it's going to take. It's just a case where if there's a kid waving at you, just wave back. It's really not that hard, but I, I guess that's my thoughts anyway. Uh, let me know your thoughts down below. Apologies if this is a bit of a rambly video, but... I wanted to come out and express my thoughts because I didn't like it, you know. Um, I really didn't like it as somebody that makes YouTube videos on fan engagement. As somebody that obviously sees a lot of Newcastle United fan engagement. I just think, look at these other Premier League teams. I can imagine us being like that before the takeover. And it's not nice, you know. I think especially for a team like Leeds as well, when you're really struggling in the Premier League. It's that little bit of a boost, you know. Yes, you might have lost 4-1 to Bournemouth. But let's say one of those players would have went and signed that kid's shirt. That kid will look at that player as a hero, even though he might have played crap in the game. So it's one of them ones where my honest opinion being is that if a player is getting criticised, let's say, for example, um, I don't know, Callum Wilson is getting criticised for something. Uh, he's somebody that if he signs shirts, gets pictures taken, everyone will look at him as a lovely bloke. Everyone will back him even more, even if he's not playing particularly well in the pitch. So it's one of them ones where, I don't know... Um, yeah, I just wanted to come out and give my thoughts about it because I didn't really like the way it was two came across. I thought it was really bad towards the fans and I think it has been rightfully called out in social media. So I just wanted to come out today and give my thoughts on that. But honestly, I think Newcastle have done an unbelievable job. I've been really happy how the club's been since the takeover. And I fully expect things to continue now. I know once Newcastle sign more players and we get was he higher calibre players, and it might change. But honestly, I think we'll still be as nice as we possibly can be. It's just a case where I think time will tell, but... Just know that if Newcastle do something bad, and yeah, um, I wouldn't hide away from it. I, I wouldn't be happy at all. So, and the shot of club would be the same. But uh, yeah, we'll, we'll get to it if we ever get to that avenue. But I thought I'd come out and uh, express my my disappointment almost in the other teams. But let me know your thoughts down below, guys. I'm gonna wrap things up now. We appreciate you for watching. Thank you so much, and we'll see you for an exciting weekend as we take on Arsenal. Take care, guys, and I'll see you all in the next.